So I had a follow-up appointment last week. It was kind of a follow-up. It, it was supposed to be with my primary, but she is actually out on maternity leave. So I saw someone that was filling in for her. And thankfully, she fit the demographic that I look for in a, prim in a primary care physician. If you've been around here long enough, you already know why I look for a specific kind of provider as a primary care physician. And this one checked all the boxes. So if you know, then you know. Hello, I'm RMZ. Welcome to my channel. Now the appointment itself went really, really well. And while we were wrapping things up, I asked her if she could include a testosterone test when she submitted my blood work order. I've been hearing more and more men in the community talk about TRT. And I was just curious as to where my number stood, especially at my age. Testosterone naturally drops as we get older. And funny enough, I had never been tested before. So I thought it'd be a good idea. I've also been feeling some extra fatigue lately, and that could be a sign of low testosterone. But if you've been following my journey for the last year or so, you also know that I've been dealing with a low blood count and low absolute, um, and low absolute lymphocytes post-radiation treatment, which I started in February and completed at the end of April. So the fatigue could be coming from that too. And really, since the start of my radiation treatment, I've really been struggling to get up and go to the gym and just feeling really, really tired, having a lack of energy. But either way, she added the test. I got the labs done and the results came back. And there were five components in this panel. First, total testosterone. That's just the total amount circulating in your bloodstream at the moment that they draw your blood. And then you have albumin. Albumin is a transport protein. It carries testosterone through the bloodstream and any testosterone bound to abalone is considered usable. Next, you have SHBG or sex hormone binding globulin. This is another transport protein, but the testosterone that binds to SHBG is not bioavailable, meaning your body can't actually use it. Fourth, there's a measurement of free testosterone. That's the unbound stuff not attached to any proteins. And then you have bioavailable testosterone, which is basically testosterone that's not tied up by SHBG and can actually be used by your tissues. Now, as far as my numbers go, my total testosterone was good. My body's still producing enough. My abalone was good. My free testosterone, technically good, but barely. It's at the bottom of the reference range. The reference range is 46, and I came in at 47.2. Now, there were things that went sideways. My SHBG was out of whack, slightly higher than it should be, just above the top reference range. And because SHBG locks testosterone away, that pushed my bioavailable testosterone down as well. So, of course, I loaded the results into ChatGPT and asked it to break everything down and something interesting popped up when it explained why SHBG might be elevated. The first reason was age. The second reason was weight loss or being in a caloric deficit, which can happen with increased cardio, lower body fat, and yes, GLP-1 use. And that caught my attention for two reasons. One, my own weight loss and GOP-1 use. Two, how many men in the community are on GOP-1 and also doing TRT? So naturally, my next question was, can a GOP-1 actually increase SHBG? And here's what ChatGPT said. Number one, GOP-1 meds don't directly change testosterone, but they affect the things that control SHBG. The big one is weight loss and reduced calorie intake. When insulin drops, the liver produces more SHBG. More SHBG means less usable testosterone, and that lined up perfectly with my labs. And then number two, GLP-1s reduce appetite, so you naturally eat fewer calories. That lowers the insulin and raises SHBG. And number three, Rapid fat loss also increases SHGB and lowers free and bioavailable testosterone. This is common in the first 6 to 12 months of weight loss, and I'm well past that. 
And then number four, if you lose muscle mass because you're eating less or not getting enough protein, that can push your usable testosterone even lower. Number five, speaking of protein, appetite suppression can mean fewer meals and and inconsistent protein intake, which can also raise SHBG. Number six, GLP-1s improve liver health, which is a good thing, but a healthier liver also produces more SHBG. So men who lose weight on GLP-1s or keto diet or fasting Whatever the method, they all tend to show this same pattern. So here's the summary as it relates to my labs. My total testosterone, normal. My SHBG, high. Free testosterone, normal, but barely. My bioavailable testosterone is low. Basically, it's not, basically it's not a production issue. It's an availability issue. And the good news is that as your weight stabilizes and nutrition levels off, SHGB also comes back down. Now I'm at the point where all that has already occurred for me. My weight has leveled off and I'm almost two months, two years in on my journey. I've been in maintenance for a while and I've been maintaining the same level of weight for a while. So I don't think some of those things actually apply to me, but the weight loss itself may be part of the issue. And that may be something that other men on, on this journey are also dealing with. I just found the whole thing pretty interesting. I'll be talking to my primary or or her backup in December and a follow-up appointment about what a plan of action should be. TRT is one option for increasing testosterone availability, but I also need to coordinate with my care team because my prostate cancer history. In case you didn't know, prostate cancer tissues feeds off testosterone. But according to ChatGPT, TRT is generally considered safe after successful treatment. So I've already completed successful treatment. So hopefully that would be an option for me. I'm still, I'm going to wait and see what my doctor says. I'll keep you posted. Thank you for tuning in with me. I hope you all have a great and wonderful holiday, Thanksgiving with your friends and family. And you have, and I also hope that you have many things to be thankful for. I know I do. And one of those things is my family, of course. And friends, uh, I have many other things to be thankful for, but I'm also thankful for this GOP1 community. I'm also uh, extremely thankful for this GOP1 medication, and I'll be taking my shot on Friday as normal. Uh, Of course, that's after the holiday anyway, but I hope you aren't out there delaying your shot. Talk to you later.